You've got mail. Before the internet was created, things took time. Access to information was limited and slower. Instant communication across the planet was not yet possible, and the cultural divide between groups of people was much larger, as people had less access to information on other groups of people. The development of the internet began with its predecessor and foundation to the internet, DARPANET. Researcher Lawrence G. Roberts went to DARPA to begin the development on his idea, DARPANET. Soon along with a few other researchers, a rudimentary ARPANET was born and the internet was on its way to being created. The original idea for the creation of the internet was a plan for a network between researchers. Slowly over time and with research, multiple universities helped create a preliminary internet which was to be used to share documents with each other. It was called the TCP slash IP and it was credited to Vincent Cerf and Robert Kahn. It would later become what is modern internet. Once companies began taking interest in the internet, Researchers began teaching classes and workshops for vendors to be able to incorporate internet technology in their products. This is what started commercialization and allowed for the internet to be open to the public. Well, it was in 1989 and the internet already existed and you could send email, but there was no websites. So there was no HTTP, there was no HTML, there was no space or things you could click through. And because I was frustrated, it didn't exist. I imagined a system where you could just click from one to the other. And that was so compelling that I decided that I wanted to uh, build it. We've thrived using the web, with it being an open medium, that any, so anybody could connect to anything. We need to, at this point, it's 25 years on, we need to think about the next 25 years to make sure that we establish these, the, principles that the web's being based on. Prin principles of openness, principles of privacy, principles of not being censored, for example. If you actually think the power you have when you have a web browser compared to the power of somebody who doesn't, company. You want to start a company in New York and you just, you think of a name of a company and you search for it on the web and it's already been, names have already been thought of, ah, you try another one. You're in an African village and you don't have a web browser. No, you can't do that. You can start with little things you, you do to do with health, to do with uh, just keeping a family together, communicating with. Also really important for democracy. If you are not connected to the internet, how is your voice going to be heard? How are you going to make sure that the values which you think are important are, going to, are being represented by all the governments out there? Because, you know, it wasn't just me. I had the idea, right? I invented it. And then, in fact, it was taken up by all kinds of people over the world. I get an email from somebody saying, hey, Tim, I've set up a web server with a dinosaur exhibit on it or something. Or, hey, I've got an art exhibit. And these people, you know, I didn't know them. Uh, and they all collaborate together. Trying, people come, companies come. They're trying to make the technology better, trying to make it a better basis for designing really cool websites. That spirit of international collaboration has been absolutely awesome for the last 25 years. The internet has changed greatly since its creation with the addition of World Wide Web, streaming, and the like. The internet has become a daily part of our lives. The internet has become a tool, an entertainment media, medium, and everything in between.
So my name is Rod Milstead. I'm a tech teacher here at Drake High School. I use the internet, it seems like, for everything. For both my classes and for my own learning, I use it as a constant resource. So let's be honest, right? I'm old enough, check the gray, right? That I know well what it was like to have to look something up. Library's closed. Too bad. You can't learn that thing. You can't get that information. Now you jump on YouTube, look through the tutorials that are there. Some aren't good. Don't watch those. Find the ones that are good. Watch them and learn. I use it a lot to learn stuff. Um, what does the internet mean to you? So, no surprise from my last answer would be just the, the volume of things you can learn. And when I get excited about learning stuff, I'm not just talking about like learning about the French Revolution, which is really exciting to learn about. But I'm also talking about learning like how do I cook this, or how do I take better photographs, or how do I fix my refrigerator. And also, let's be honest, for entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally shifted how we watch movies, and it has killed regular television. So, it's gotten access to it has become faster number one there so it's more instant it's also more available when you're no longer of course tied to sitting at a computer to grab something off the internet thanks to our phones so it's it in our world it's everything yeah okay uh do you think the internet um is a positive or a negative effect on the society i think it's ultimately positive for those who can get access to the information and resources that they need. But your question acknowledges that there are those who don't have access to the internet, so then it has made that situation worse. If you can't get it on the internet, can you find it anywhere? Right. Okay, this is the last question. Ready. Okay, how has the internet changed human interactions? Now that's another area where we don't know if it's better or worse. Now tend to stay at home more, sit on our phones more, and that may be for some where a significant portion of their social interaction happens is this. On the other hand, if you are not comfortable at interacting face-to-face -face with people, maybe now it's giving people an opportunity to build a social network that they otherwise wouldn't have, so they, they are less lonely, and their connections are just made in a different way. The internet affected you. Um, the internet has helped me keep in contact with friends around the world. Yeah. What effect do you think the internet has had on human interaction? Well, it definitely has its good sides and its bad sides. The bad sides would probably be that when you're at parties with people, like, you don't get to like have one-on-one -on -one conversations without them checking their phone or going on Snapchat or Instagram. The good sides are definitely are that you get to see family and friends that you don't get to often see and you can like connect with them and yeah. The internet has become a major part of many people's lives. It is not uncommon to see people walking down the sidewalks, hunched over their phones, scrolling through Instagram or texting. Social media, for example, has become a huge part of the internet and has impacted the way people have interacted, communicated, and shared ideas with others. Social media has also increased the population of the internet over the past few years.